Kiss is dude, so overrated, it's ridiculous. No, they're not. Um, dude, 100%. I am, yeah, they only had, uh, you know, 50 fucking hit singles. Um, I so am, did Poison. Do not. Oh, oh, you're breaking <laughs> rules all over the place. Facts are tracks. But gonna break some vinyl down from the front to the back with facts on tracks. Showtime. Welcome to Breaking Vinyl. I'm your host, Dez, a.k.a. Johnny, 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 Johnny. Fever. And this morning I had a nice egg and cheese sandwich on toast with Frank's hot sauce smothering it. And my cat, Mr. Jinx, had a nice tuna filet smothered in gravy. Her. Tonight I'm joined by my three co-hosts. First up, the podcaster coming through in high fidelity. Evil Ed. Ed, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I also had an egg and cheese sandwich. However, I had it with liverwurst, and that was the first time I ever tried liverwurst, and it was delicious. Oh, God, every time Thanks. I think I can't hate you more. <laughs> 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 Fucking liverwurst. All right, just stop. Stop right there. Liverwurst, now. yeah. My, no. my 92-year-old neighbor said, my niece got this for me, and I don't like it. Will you try it? And I said, I'm Italian. I'll eat anything. <laughs> I wonder if it was your 92-year-old neighbor who totaled my Mini Cooper Monday morning. Yes, my Mini Cooper is gone. They cannot save it. It's been totaled. I was lucky to walk away. Okay. Uh, next up, the podcaster. Playing the deep cuts. Dangerous Dave. Dave, what did you have for breakfast this morning? I had uh, cigarettes and Diet Mountain Dew. Every oh. time I think I can't love you more. <laughs> <laughs> and the podcaster with a degree in rock and roll. Beaconstein. And Fee, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Uh, pretty good hangover. Uh, I, the, the last food I ate was a drunken cheeseburger around midnight. So, yeah. Holy colon cancer. And let me ask you, Fee. <laughs> that's, that's rock and roll. <laughs> Did you play Guitar Hero last night? No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. As always, the mission of this show is for us to introduce each other and you, the listeners, to albums and bands, which you may never have heard of before, while also discussing the classics and on occasion we will ruthlessly insult each other's musical taste so sit back and enjoy the show tonight we will be discussing the fifth studio album rock and roll all over by kiss produced by eddie kramer released on november 11th of 1976 on casablanca records the album peaked at the number 11 spot on the billboard 200 and i should get these names right on lead vocals Paul Stanley, on bass, Gene Simmons, on lead guitar, the ace, Ace Freely, and on drums, Peter Chris. Okay, let's do some Ben facts. I'll start us off. Fact number one, Ace Freely is a killer guitar player, regardless of what Ed tries to sell you on this podcast. <laughs> and fact number two, Kiss is not overrated, again, regardless of whatever Ed tries to sell you on this podcast. Okay. Dave, what do you have for facts on KISS? All right. I got a couple here. Uh, it was recorded at the Star Theater in Nanuet, New York, in September of 1976 uh, in order to try to achieve a big you know, concert-style sound uh, produced by Eddie Kramer, with whom they recorded their first demos in March of 1973 and also helped them out uh, to construct the Alive album. Awesome. And there was one more thing that I found. I'm not sure how, how true this is. Uh, KissConcertHistory.com. Uh, according to them, in mid-November of 76, when they were rehearsing for the uh, Rock and Rollover Tour, um, looks like tour rehearsals were held right in, in our backyard in the uh, Wakefield Mass area. Oh, no um, shit. I, I found uh, conflicting information, whether it was at the uh, 
there's like an army base there or the civic center in downtown Wakefield. Um, but according, apparently the hotel they stayed at was the Lord Wakefield Motor Hotel right on the lake in Wakefield, known today mm. as the Lakeside Inn. It's still there. Awesome. I just thought that was cool. It is cool. <laughs> I used it's to fucking... live in the next town over from Wakefield. That's fucking cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice job there, Professor. And Ed, what do you got? Uh, to uh, continue on the album recording facts, Peter Chris's drums were supposedly recorded in the bathroom of that venue to get a more live sound. Um, so I don't think it helped, but. <laughs> uh, Ed, I can't defend the drums or the sound either i'm sorry I know, I know. I uh, I so many of the songs are actually uh reworks of previous demos uh specifically supposedly uh three of gene simmons songs uh calling dr love is supposedly a rework of bad bad love ladies room is based on don't want uh your romance and love them and leave them is based on rock and rolls royce hmm, interesting Ah, uh, so, Ed, I don't know if I want to share this with our listeners, because once it's been out there, they're never going to hear it the same. But my wife made an observation the other day. She said, you are the Ed McMahon of the show. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> oh, we laughed so hard over. She goes, it's fucking great. She goes, he is fucking Ed McMahon. That's it. So, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay well, i don't agree with you i think you're a fucking moron oh god are you talking I, you're talking directly to my wife there no i'm talking oh. about your your personal music taste oh okay okay <laughs> Deba debatable debatable uh <clears throat> fee what do you got on kiss i didn't have much other than what you guys had but i one thing i was surprised at was they mentioned uh this was the first album Ace didn't have any writing credits on, and I thought that was kind of strange because I thought this was some of his best work, really. So, uh, It's funny because I only can listen to Kiss between the opening album Kiss and um, once Unmasked came out, that's I don't I never listened to it. I have no interest in listening to it. It's it's, you know, between Kiss's first album and, you know, right before Unmasked. That's that's Kiss. And yep. uh this isn't my favorite Kiss album, but but with that being said, that is not a bad thing. Okay, it just oh, means it's a horrible thing. It just means there's like <laughs> a lot of great vintage Kiss albums. So here you go. All right, let's do some uh, opening thoughts on this one. I'll get us started off. Um, so as a kid, I was a diehard Kiss fan, as most kids from the '70s were, and uh, reminds me of a little story. I used to go up to my grandfather's house in Chelmsford. You know, on weekends from here and you know here and there, and I'd be hanging out with uh, his kids, my aunt, my uncle, which strangely were both younger than me because my grandfather married a much younger woman, half his age after his uh, relationship with my grandmother ended. Uh, he was a player, cool dude. So we had a big house, and uh, this house was covered in a thick layer of red lead paint. So in the mornings, I would go around back, and I found a spot where the paint was coming loose. And I used to sit back there for about an hour, and I would pick this lead paint off the house in big chips and would eat it for about an hour. This explains so much. Well, we're going to get to this. So, so I would eat this paint, and, and then I would go back inside with you know the lead paint rushing through my young veins with a lead paint high, and I would listen to Kiss for a couple hours. And eventually, the spot on the house was noticed by my grandfather, and he told me, don't fucking do that anymore. Not because he was worried about my health, because it was, you know, 1977, 78. More because it was fucking up his house, because that's how it happened in the 70s. They didn't care about us. Um, so I'm going to send it around the room. Uh, Ed, have you, as a 70s child, ever eaten lead paint chips? It was very popular in the day. Uh, I cannot confirm or deny that. Okay. But it was the 70s. Uh, it was, you know, 70s, early 80s were the time of lawn darts. <laughs> um, throwing regular darts at each other and uh, cigarettes. <laughs> nice. And Dave, have you ever eaten a lead paint chip? Um, not knowingly, but yeah, we we had all those other fun hazards in the seventies and eighties. Uh, yeah, 
Okay. And fee, lead paint, yes or no? Most likely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, isn't that weird? Like, that was a thing in the 70s. Like, we all fucking ate lead paint. Right. I swear it had to have had a buzz because I kept going back until I got yelled at. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. Anyway, uh, until about the age of 12 years old, I would go out as Gene Simmons every Halloween. And I used to get yelled at for this, too. I would draw Gene Simmons makeup on every celebrity face I could find on every TV guide in every magazine that came into the house, trying to uncover <laughs> Who Gene Simmons really was. I had to know. I would draw it on everybody. Like, oh, that's not him. That's not him. And I never figured it out. Um, I have listened to this album more times than I can count. Um, and for the record, Kiss's first album, self-titled Kiss, is by far my favorite Kiss album. It's not even close. And the rest of them up until Unmasked are all amazing for different reasons. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got. Um, Dave, what do you got on this? All right. I uh, started listening to Kiss uh, back in high school, I believe starting with the Destroyer album. Uh, got around to this one a few years later. I think I bought it at a used record shop in Boston on cassette. Listened to it many times since. Uh, it is one of my favorite Kiss albums. You know, it's raw and badass. Um, but yeah, there's a, it's definitely up there in, in my favorites. Uh, Dave. So, I am perplexed by you at times. You didn't listen to Kiss until high school? Yeah, yeah. I wow. was I was actually, when I was a little kid, I was deathly afraid of Kiss. Oh. I didn't know what they sounded like. <laughs> I used to have nightmares about them. And now they're yeah. like my favorite band. Oh my but, God. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea what they sounded like. But, you know, I would, I would just, you know, look, look at these superhero monsters and like, I don't know. It was it was kind of fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So starting at like probably seven or eight, I got my first Kiss record, and you know, I had a that was like what I had. That was my prized possession was my Kiss records. I had them all, and I just listened to them. And I would, you know, play the tennis racket or bang on boxes and pretend I was Kiss. And it was just for me. It was like Kiss, 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 Kiss. I was obsessed. One track mind. It was just all Kiss all the time from probably like 77 until I was like 12. So yeah, lots of kiss. Um, Ed, what do you got for this album? Have you heard? I, well, you showed it to us last week, so I know you've heard it and have it, but go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, when I was younger, I loved kiss. I mean, just like you does, it was what it, it was so out of this world and it was interesting. It was new. It was mysterious. I had the action figures, you know, all the, the stupid merch that they sold. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, the, the reason I have this album is my uncle uh, gave it to me. Uh, and it's just, I don't know, it just holds a special place in my heart because of that. However, yeah, listening to this, I was like, I never heard it the whole thing before. I heard the hits on it. And even my opinion of those hits has officially changed after listening to it again not as as promising as I was hoping it would be. Okay. Um yeah, this is not an album that I would choose to introduce someone to Kiss. Um it's fine. It's a great great album, but not one that I would choose to uh to to show someone for the first time. Uh Fee, uh Kiss, your relationship. Go. I fucking love Kiss. Right. Um I I'll tell you guys a couple of small stories here on that. And I was so excited when Dave chose this, like I could barely sit in my seat when he was, when he was letting it out, you know, nice. um, there was this girl in junior high that I just absolutely loved. Right. Was her name Christine? Close. Um, okay. Very close. Um, and she, she introduced me to kiss and the first ever kiss album that I heard was kiss alive volume two. Nice. Which, by the way, is my favorite Kiss album to this day. Nothing even holds a candle to it. And there are five tracks from this album on Alive 2. Yes. So this was a really good week for me. I, I fucking, I love Kiss. I love this album. I'm pumped. Nice. This is awesome. Let's go. Um, I need to know who that was, Fee. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll text after. On uh, that. Fee, <laughs> Fee, I um, want to ask you, because this is something that I would do. So I got Kiss Alive 2 as well. And mm -hmm. I would open that album up to the center 
page, the center mm-hmm. of the album, which was Kiss on stage, fire blazing. Yep. And I would just stare at it. I could literally listen to that record and stare at that picture for hours, just imagining I was at the show, imagining what it might be like. Like that picture for me might as well have been TV. It might as well have been moving, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was great. I would do the same exact thing. That was... uh <sighs> Wow. That that vinyl never collected dust in my in, in you know in my house. It was. And it from was what good. I understand, that album was live, but also overdubbed. I believe to make it sound a little cleaner. Am I right on that? Anybody have any facts on that? Oh yeah, definitely fixed up. Okay, okay, because mm. it sounds great, especially for the time period. It's like wow, that's yeah. that was hell of a concert. Okay, uh, let's get into the track by track breakdown. Uh, first track is "I Want You." And uh, I'm going to keep the uh, the arrangement of how I throw these tracks at us as they are, because it's working, and I was getting confused and missing people, and we're just going to roll with this, okay? <laughs> uh, so I want you. Uh, this intro is amazing. The acoustic riff, so good, so rich. Paul's words, his delivery. Um, then we break into this guitar riff and this funky groove they have some really good grooves on this album like oh just so good it's a formula we'll get this simple guitar lick all by itself and then the band just breaks in and the thing just starts grooving um and finally the ace gives us this overly simple but killer guitar solo with this crunchy 70s sound i love it uh dave what do you got on i want you all right sensitive paul stanley here with his 12 string guitar yeah uh, band enters kicking ass i love that the guitars are loud and pushed up front uh the guitar solo is is paul in the first half playing and then ace comes in in the second half uh, they have this cool flanger effect on the whole mix when it kicks back in from the uh second soft part it's a great way to start this party yes it is <laughs> uh ed let's hear your thoughts on i want you <laughs> Uh, I agree. I, great opening song. I love how it starts acoustically and Paul's voice is great. Uh, and then the way it kicks in, I think the music is simple with warm vocal harmonies, but it is so enjoyable. Like, I, I really enjoyed this track. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and Fee, what do you got on I Want You? I Want You is a playlist song for me. It's one of the songs from Alive 2 that I grew up loving. and um. I did want to ask you guys this because a couple of times on the show you had mentioned about actual acoustic guitars versus electric acoustic guitars, I think. Is that what you were talking about before? Um, yes. And there there were a couple of times on this album where I wasn't sure, like especially on, on a song like this where it goes from just that acoustic right into, you know, uh, heavy stuff. Like were they, were they playing an actual acoustic or not? You know, those were oh, just yeah. some – questions i was thinking when i was when i was listening and seeing yeah. if i could pick up on the differences in there so absolutely an acoustic track to bring this in and then you know the band just kicks in i mean it's all yeah. studio work so yeah in the, in the studio they do it separate you know they'll record an acoustic guitar on one track and then you know the electric heavy guitars are on a different track and they just split it up that way right gotcha gotcha right. either um, way playlist great tune yeah, really good. So this is this album. One of the things about this album that kind of like makes it puts it in that category is not one of my favorite Kiss albums. Is this is not Ace's show. He's not playing as many solos as usual, and he's not like I've noticed a lot of the solos on this album are abbreviated, almost like they were kind of like I don't know, kind of trying to shut him down a little bit. And uh, yeah, so being an Ace Family friend, you know, that's was a problem for me. Uh, Take Me, track two. Again, a great groove. Um, Paul Stanley gives us his over-sexualized lyrics, which is Paul Stanley's signature. But it's cool the way he does it. You know, I mean, he's so... I mean, we're going to get into it. Kiss Paul Stanley or kiss Gene Simmons? How do you like your kiss? We're going to get into it. <clears throat> but um, this one has a killer bridge. And the bridge sets up an infectious chorus again. This is a staple of Kiss. These guys know how to arrange a song. They know how to write three parts that each one gets better than the last. And that's how you build a great song. And they're a simple rock band, and they do it great. Um, 
Ace gives us a nice, quick, harmonized guitar solo um, with some of his signature licks panning left to right on the fade out. But again, it's like this solo should be longer. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, was there some? I, I feel like half his solos are on the cutting room floor somewhere. Like, it, it just, I don't know. Um, Dave, what do you got? Put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's <laughs> up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene's bass sounds great. Uh, the 16th notes on the hi-hat during the chorus are a little questionable. Uh, they sort of add to the cheese. Uh, good solo. And then uh, Paul starts cutting loose at the end with the vocal. It's fun times. Yeah. Dave, this is kind of a hot take, and I don't even want to say it because they just love Peter Chris so much. I mean, he's a member of KISS. He's not really a good drummer. And his sound <laughs> isn't very good. And, I mean... I don't want to get hate mail because I'm not saying he's terrible. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying. Ed, what do you got? Uh, total 70s groove. I really like this song. Uh, it, it just made me excited because I like this better than the first song. And I was like, oh, this is great. I like when albums progress like this. Uh, I think the chorus has got a phenomenal hook. Uh, I really like it. This is my idea of like greasy blues rock. Uh, nothing showy or too stand out. Just a great song. And that's yeah. what I appreciate about the song. Yeah. Uh, Fee, take me or don't. <laughs> I I really like this song too. I, I was kind of torn on whether this was just going to be just okay or a playlist song for me. Because in that chorus, when they, that like high backing, you know, take oh, me yeah. part is is kind of, it's kind of annoying at times but it kind of fits really well with the song too so I'll, I'll call it a playlist song um yeah one of my notes was this was an abbreviated solo it was a short solo i didn't i don't, I don't know i didn't really yeah. get that but but it was really good it really yeah. fit well so yeah, yeah i like this love the double guitar love the harmonies again though it just stood out as being very short um, I like those those backing highs with the with the little like uh, back slap reverb on it. I thought it was yeah. good. Kind of caught yeah. my ear. Uh, okay, here we go. I mean, if I if I had a drum roll, I would let it rip right now. Track three, calling Doctor Love. I mean, this is the crown jewel on this album. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I absolutely and this one would tip my hat. I absolutely love when Gene Simmons takes over the mic for Kiss. Kiss becomes a darker, more mysterious, more serious, ass-kicking band when he is the front man. It's just, I mean, I love Paul Stanley. I love him, but he's a little... <laughs> Where Gene Simmons just fucking, <laughs> like, just brings it. He's just, fuck you, the demon. And I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to make this simple. I love everything everything about this song nothing i don't like and the solo is ace freely at his very best this is oh, fucking great dave what do you got same yeah uh reach number 16 on billboard pop singles chart in 1977 starts off like a punch in the face mm. uh guitars and bass sound great uh pretty standard gene song but you know that is a good thing uh, you know, I'm air guitaring around my living room and wagging my tongue around, uh, <laughs> pretending I'm Gene Simmons. You know, great A solo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a little biased on this because, again, growing up, it was all Gene Simmons all the time. So anytime he would sing, I would be all over it. Uh, Ed, talk about it. Uh, Seven-year-old me mm. loves it. Eight-year-old me realized how fucking gay Gene Simmons was. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. All right. Dude, Here you are have my no notes. taste. You have no taste. Here are my notes. Oh, God. You're so, not so much cheese. The music, the lyrics, the harmonies. It just doesn't do it for me. I mean, Dr. Love. It's like, oh, my God. <sighs> could you fucking write something better? Oh. And, okay, Mr. Fucking Pervy Lyrics. Uh, Fee, I love Kiss. But, oh, there's nothing pervy about their lyrics. You're such a fucking hypocrite. I am. Oh, the only reason this song was a hit is because Gene Simmons has the best character in Kiss. Everyone loves the demon. Everyone. Dude. After the first two songs kicked this song's ass so bad. 
Uh, fuck you. You could see the video. And fuck Gene Simmons. I'm fucking losing my mind right now. You have been exposed, my Write friend. Write me as much hate mail as you want. <sighs> fuck him. You have been exposed. How dare you? Dr. Love is a shit. Second. It is so average and mediocre. It's oh, not even funny. So it's is like your an boss. average. It's it's literally like everything is either better or worse than this song that Kiss has written. Fee, tell fucking Ed his cock is average and why <laughs> we all love Doctor Love. <laughs> okay, so Ed, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> 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 Um, no here's the deal and disclaimer kiss is the only band for me that gets a pass on the creepy lyrics the only band (laughs) there's always the exception to the rule this is the exception to the rule and if you catch me on any other band you can you can say that that's fine that's fine but kiss no kiss owns this this is kiss so my first, very first note on this, and this is a fucking playlist for me because this song's a banger. This is one of the best songs on the album. Second best song on the album, in my opinion. But <clears throat> I'm digging the Gene songs on this album, giving it a, you know, giving it a, a closer listen. Um, I've always been a Paul Stanley guy, but now with the, you know, re-listening to this, I'm, I'm kind of starting to rethink that that strategy a little bit, you know? Uh this guy can he can fucking sing he can play he can he can write he he does uh, good uh the solo is sick tech sick tech. um playlist yep that's all Thank i got you. um ed i believe that you have elevated my rank in our arguments by saying this song is average and the chorus sucks <laughs> i think it's average for kiss i do i think it's just it's not it's. I think it's so overrated. Oh. I think Gene Simmons is so overrated. Don't get me wrong. He's uber talented. But I think the stuff he writes is just utter cheese. Oh. I okay. think the band itself. Like, I have so many cheese references in all my notes here. It's ridiculous. But he loved Mr. Big. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. They're, they're not amazing musicians. Oh, God. Mr. Big. There's more to being an amazing musician which we're going to find out in the bonus track. Okay. Track number four, <laughs> ladies room. Okay. So ladies room, the simple stereo guitar riff. Okay. So we get this little riff left and right. It's in your head. Very simple. Gene Simmons comes in with this run. Woo. Woo. Psst, psst, psst. Red hot. This is great. And for the first time in the album, Gene Simmons' bass takes center stage. And it is fucking great. Oh, he's such a good bass player. And then we get the great Gene Simmons vocals again. This album is a tale of two albums. If you love Peter, if you love Paul Stanley, actually it's a tale of three albums. But if you love Paul Stanley, you're going to love half the album. Love Gene Simmons, love the other half of the album. You love them together, fine. Uh, I love it. It's fucking great. Um, song has cowbell, great lyrics, killer chorus. What else can you ask for? It's like uh, an Italian wedding soup, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, go ahead. Yes, another classic Gene song about getting it on in the bathroom with some ladies. <laughs> killer cowbell. <laughs> uh, nice moving bass line. I, I think he does not get enough credit for his bass playing. Oh, uh, great. I even heard double track cowbell towards the end. It was yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. Guitar solo was a simple chordal thing. Um, you know, they could have expanded on that a little bit more, but but it it worked for for the song. Yeah, agree. Love this song. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Ed, what do you got? Uh, I really like the music in the song. They do. Uh, I think the guitar and bass work well together. I disagree with. I, again, I think Gene does great average bass playing. He does his job well. Okay. I don't think he's a great bass player. I just think he writes good bass lines for what Kiss does. Okay. Uh, however, the lyrics are total fucking shit in this song. Oh, okay. And <laughs> Fee, I literally wrote, Fee probably called the cops after listening to this. If he didn't, 
He's a complete fucking hypocrite. <laughs> Literally, my notes. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, hey, I, I, I'm with V, okay? Because you guys know that I usually don't like when a band like revolves a whole album around like you know hand in a pocket and rock and kissing and like pussy. You know, it gets old, but not when Kiss does it. Not when Kiss does it. Oh, they did it fucking first. even creepier. They did it first. Fucking no. <laughs> Fee. They what do you got? Do it first? First. Fee. You're out of your mind. They did it first with makeup on. <laughs> Fee. Yeah. And I don't know what you're hearing, man. Yeah, me uh, neither. I think the bass stuff is good on this. I I enjoyed it throughout the album. Um, but hey, what do I know? Uh this was another one I had on a short solo. Like, it, maybe you're right, Des. I'm rethinking this because when I first listened, I was like, man, Ace fucking kills it on this album. And then, short, yeah, just left it on the, I don't know. But hey, play to expand it. on that point, uh, that Kiss documentary, what is it, Kissology or whatever it is? Yeah. Was this around that time of the famous interview when oh, so good. all of Kiss is sitting on the couch and Ace Frehley is completely shit-faced Wasted. and all you see is Gene and Paul staring at him like, I'm going to fucking cut your throat after this. Dude, one of my favorite interviews ever. And, and Peter Chris is egging him on. Like, yeah. Peter Chris is over there egging him on like, yeah, go ahead, Ace. Yeah, keep going, keep going. No, hit me less. So good. So good. Yeah, right? Maybe that's why half of his guitar tracks yeah. are on the floor. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt oh, me. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, Sophie, playlist that's a good, or? Absolute playlist, yes. Okay. 100%. And, you know, it says ladies' room, not little girls' room. There's a yeah. difference. Yeah. I call bullshit. <clears throat> Nope. Who hasn't been in the ladies' room? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, track five, Baby Driver. Um, so this song was released one year after Fog Hat Slow Ride. It's hard not to draw a strong comparison between the two songs from the riff to the beat to the lyrics. It's a it's a fucking ripoff. I mean, it's it's bad. It's bad. And with that being said, if I can separate the two and just pretend like I never heard Slow Ride, it's a great song. Great classic rock and roll song with a cool chorus. But I cannot do that. I have to uh, address the elephant in the room. And uh, whoa, it's a big one. Uh, Dave, what do you got? Yeah, the Peter Chris song. Uh, got some evil sounding bass from Gene. Uh, song's a little basic, uh, apparently is a rewrite of a demo he did with his previous band before Kiss. Um, I suspect any of the catchy parts that, that wind, wound up on the finished product were probably suggested by the other guys in the band. I, I haven't heard the original demo, but um, I'm assuming it was probably kind of, you know, meh. <laughs> but yeah. uh, great drums, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. Again, Peter Chris is fine. Peter Chris is fine. I'm not trying to say this guy blows, but I believe he was a little limited and maybe held the band back in spots, especially with this album. Ed, what do you got? Maybe you're out. Uh, so everything started to go horribly off the tracks for me, starting with the last song, Ladies Room. Then they followed up with this track, and here are my notes. This song should have been flushed down the toilet with the rest of the shit. <laughs> Instead, this is that turd that you're stuck with, staring at, trying to figure out how to get rid of it without making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This was ab This is probably one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. Um, Ed, much like with the Dogs the More, there was a three song skid, okay, at about this exact same spot. And I am not going to deny that we are going to hit a slight skid here. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, Fee, what do you got? Yeah, this one. Uh, just okay, but the screams drive me nuts when he starts screaming and all of that. It, it was oh. just, it was awful. No, he's unhinged. Yeah. Um, another thing you guys talk about sometimes or like filler tunes like mid-album just like we need a fucking song is this one of those songs you think definitely oh yeah <laughs> okay all right yeah but just just okay like uh stop screaming 
See, this but was this... let's get really shit faced and pick a song to add to the album. Okay. So this is <laughs> why I have songs that rank super high. Um, even though maybe the album itself or albums that rank super high, even though maybe the songs and the performances weren't, you know, top notch. If there's an album where I don't feel like there's a filler song, for instance, Rat out of the cellar, there's right. no filler song on that album. It's just not. It's fucking no. phenomenal. Yep. I mean, that's why it is what it is. Um, there's certain albums like that where I just, I'm not skipping past a single song. I'm going to say it again. Junkyard, junkyard. I'm not skipping a song. Okay. <clears throat> Track six, Love Them and Leave Them. And this song reminded me of a strange one night stand involving myself, a three legged dog, a pair of heavily blood stained white sweatpants and a badly sharded pair of underwear, followed <laughs> by an extremely awkward cup of coffee in the morning. I ran this story past my wife last night to see if she thought it was appropriate for me to tell on the podcast, and she called me, let me quote, a nasty bitch. She said, you're a nasty bitch. A nasty bitch, and I'm never having sex with you again. She actually said that, and she had heard the story before from uh, some people that were at this party. Um, and she forbid me from telling the story on the show in its complete, uh, in, its, in its complete totality. She said I could give the cliff notes, which I just did. So those are the basic facts, and you are all um, welcome to draw your own conclusions and fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> As for the song, we get a simple but great guitar riff leading into a cool groove. Gene has some fun lyrics in the verses, but the chorus misses the mark by a mile on this one. And uh, his performance, his vocal performance, it gets campy at times. It starts to feel like uh, Big Trouble in Little China or something. It's just, it's a little goofy. I I'm not crazy about this song. Uh, Dave, have you ever been part of a three-legged dog one-night stand? Um, sure, without the okay. three-legged dog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Love me, leave him. I love this song. Uh, opens with a killer riff. All the instruments are sounding awesome. Uh, verse kind of falls off a little quality-wise, uh, but Gene's voice sounds great. Uh, this one, to me, is all about the chorus. You know, classic ace solo with the uh, pickup switch stutter at the end uh, for for all non-guitar players, non-musicians. Uh, ace plays a Gibson Les Paul, uh, has a volume control for each pickup, so he can turn up one pickup, turn off the other pickup, and use the switch that, that selects between the sound of the pickups to go back and forth, giving you that kind of a stuttering effect. Uh, nice. But yeah, I love it. Yeah, the Gibson Les Paul is the, uh, the greatest guitar ever made. Uh, Dave, do you own a Gibson Les Paul? I do. What do you got? Uh, Gibson Les Paul Classic Plus 93 Purple. Not, ooh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, I actually nice. own two Gibson Les Pauls. I have a 1974 Black Les Paul Custom, uh, all original. It was a uh, wedding anniversary gift from my wife. It is the more mojo than you can imagine. And then I think I've mentioned it before. I have a 1980 Les Paul Standard that I bought from a gentleman off Craigslist who had bought it at Walpole Music in 1980 to learn how to play. He was in a motorcycle accident. He didn't need any money, but his hand was destroyed. So he put it in a closet and I went and bought it two years ago with the original case candy. It had never been played. It was a time capsule. Never, wow. ever been played. And I have only played it one time. I plugged it in to make sure everything worked. And I've never, ever played it because I can't. I can't. Got like five guitars. I cannot play this guitar. It doesn't have one pick mark on it. Nothing. It's amazing. Ed, love them and leave them. Uh, yeah, I wish they'd just leave them. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> this super generic in intro. I think it's garbage cheese. Everything <laughs> I don't like about Kiss is in this song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I can't defend these last two. I, I'm not crazy about them either. Uh Fee, what do you got? Uh, just okay. This I was really indifferent on this one. Uh, I did like the solo though, but 
but just okay. Yeah, yeah. Track seven, Mr. Speed. And this is the end of oh actually no we're gonna we're gonna hit a telephone pole before we get back into some good music, <laughs> but uh, Mr. Speed, um, I love the guitar riff. Okay, so here's the thing with this: the Tale of Two Cities. This opening guitar riff for me is like so Rolling Stone, so 1970 cool. This is probably one of my favorite guitar riffs on the album. I love it. Uh, Paul has some good vocal melodies in the song. But again, the chorus is weak, and that's a problem. I don't like a song without a good chorus. Uh, but the guitar riff saves this song for me from being like a total filler tune that I'm going to skip past. I can't hit skip when I hear that lick. I want to hear it again. Uh, Dave, what do you got? Yep, love that opening lick. Uh, mid-tempo, standard kiss song, kind of poppy. Um, wh- why is Paul bragging about being fast in the sack? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, he's talking, about, he's talking about the motion. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I lost overdrive like 10 years ago. I get like four boners a day, but <laughs> when I get my shot with the wife, I just, you know, slow and steady wins the race at this point. <laughs> uh, question. Do any of you guys have an Oculus? No. No. Okay. So the Oculus has. VR porn, which is amazing. The technology is there. The technology is there. And I wear this helmet a couple of times a day. Yeah. Get yourself an <laughs> Oculus. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Mr. Speed, Ed, Mr. Speed, you still got the speed? <laughs> uh, you know what? I love the opening to this song. I agree. This is a great fucking riff. Uh, it actually, it, it, it feels like a faces type riff, you know, uh, it just, it's, it gave me so much hope and then it just jerked it out from under me. Yeah, Unfortunately, just the vo- I think the song is mostly poor at best. Uh, the one bright spot is the vocal harmonies. I, I really like the vocal harmonies in it. Yeah. Some nice melodies very and well some done. nice harmonies, but the song itself just isn't very good. No, it's not. Um, Fee, what do you got? Yeah, I thought it was a little off. I mean, my first note when I f- first listened to that intro, I was like, I do like this. Like, this is good. And then, yeah, and then it was just okay the rest of the way. So I give it a just o- just okay. The solo was a little weak, I thought. I don't, I don't know what you guys thought of that, but. Yeah. Yeah, the whole song was a little weak. Mm. Uh, so track eight, See You In Your Dreams. This is the first song that I actually, like, hated on this album. Like, I don't like this song. And then it was brought back again on Gene Simmons' solo album, which, again, oh, it's so much worse in that version because he's got, like, a female singing the chorus, and it's this bizarre, like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. So out of all those solo albums, Peter Chris, I'm, I'm, Paul Stanley's is very cool, you know, and Ace Frehley's is awesome. The Ace's fucking solo album, woo, it's a smoker. Um, but see you in your dreams. This song is the first true filler song on the album. I mean, one that's like, it just doesn't belong. It's not a great tune, but it is a better version than Gene uh, offered on his solo album. But yeah, I got no interest in this tune. Um, Dave, what do you got? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I like this one. Uh, Gene's song, nothing revolutionary here. Uh, Kiss doing Kiss stuff. Uh, it is kind of impressive how much they can do with four chords, a moving bass line, and, and a couple cheap double entendres. Uh, you know, that, that's their whole career. <laughs> um, Ace's, Ace's guitar on the right is providing some percussion, like a hand clap pattern. I thought that was kind of neat. I picked yeah. that up. Uh, great Ace solo, uh, like the callback in the chorus by Paul towards the end. And then, yeah, we talked about, uh, you talked about the re-recording on Gene's 78 solo album. That was kind of a little yeah. weird, but I don't yeah. know why he felt the need to re-record it, but mm. the song was how, good for me, though. But those solo albums, how cool are those covers? Oh, so oh, yeah. good. Those so past. good. Airbrush to the max. <laughs> Ed, what do you got? Ugh. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Same blues lick as most Kiss songs. Uh, the bass line is uh, 
the vocals and lyrics are not good. However, the guitar solo is pretty good. I yeah. It. it was okay. I hated the it. The song is garbage. Though. I hate garbage. It. So I have more ones. So I rank all the songs 1 to 10. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe how many ones or 1.5s I had on this. Oh, See, no. um, Calling Dr. Love saved me on this one because I scored it twice. I gave it a 10 twice, so it was a 20. Uh, <laughs> oh, what feet. the fuck, yeah, dude? Yeah, feet, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, pretty unremarkable again. Uh, decent solo I liked. Uh, the song was, like, I don't dislike the song. It was just just okay. It was nothing, like, I won't I won't skip it, but I'll, I'll never be like, oh, yeah, I got to hear See You in Your Dreams. Yeah, so. Hated it. Uh, whose cat is that? Is that that would cat? be mine. Oh. Yes. Nice. It's when, locked and, in the room with me because my wife thought it was a good time to vacuum and turn up her radio downstairs. Nice. <laughs> and uh, so two questions for the listeners. One, what is the wife listening to? Dogs to more, I'm guessing? Definitely not. <laughs> okay. And what's the cat's name? Uh, Millie. Millie. As in Millie Vanilli? <laughs> okay. No, as in she was just a runt of the litter. She is a tiny, full-grown cat. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, and if anybody wants to know, Mr. Jinx has goofy eyes, and I have to put drops on him twice a day forever. Uh, so, and that is my Siberian husky in the bed. Oh, <laughs> nice. Behind me. And uh, husky's name is? Cody. Cody. Okay, I like that. Yeah. That's, that's a good name. Uh, track nine. Hard luck, woman. You be a hard luck. All right. Um, I love this song. I fucking love this song. Just amazing. Uh, this rich acoustic guitar that he gets, ooh, that thing sounds juicy. It's as good as it gets. That's that's acoustic guitar done perfect. Uh, we get a perfect arrangement. We get three perfectly written parts in this song, verse, bridge, chorus, each one better than the last. This is how you build a song. And, of course, the vocal. So scratchy. So gritty. This reminds me of one, I'm going to say it, Tyler from The Dogs to More. And this song sounds a bit like a Dogs to More song. It's cool. It's dirty. It's gritty. It's not overproduced. And I love it. Dave, what do you got? (laughs) Uh, This reached number 15 on the Billboard Pop Singles chart in 1976. Uh, Paul Stanley wrote it with the intention of giving it to Rod Stewart. uh, But then they wound up keeping it when they needed another peter chris song to uh you know follow up beth from from destroyer uh, so yeah obviously peter chris vocal uh, great song nice mix of guitars not sure what the words mean um the drums sound a little boxy but that's all right i mean that's kind of a problem with this whole album yeah uh, the triplet tom fill into the ride out of the song was really nice that little little breakdown thing they put there I like it. yeah uh Dave, I think that if Rod Stewart had actually done this song, it would have been like a number one hit for like an entire summer. He was red hot. Oh, yeah. He was coming off some huge singles. And I think they made a mistake because you know how much those guys love money? And I think they missed a paycheck here. I think they missed a paycheck here. Could be. Uh, As good as this song is, you put a vocalist like Rod Stewart on it and... Wow. And you have a different band record it. It's a bunch of studio musicians with some, uh, you know, some keyboards and a studio drummer. And it's a completely different song and it's a smash hit. Uh, Ed, what do you got? Yeah, uh, it's obvious this was written for Rod Stewart. I mean, from the music to even the way Peter Chris sings it with the scratchy vocal and everything. Yeah. It's yeah. a great song. It's so well written. However... I think the reason I like it so much is because every time I listen to it, I hear Rod Stewart. <laughs> mm. um, did you guys ever hear about the story of Rod Stewart having to have his stomach pumped? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> what? Oh, come on. Come on. It's, it's I, fucking, that's fucking c- pulp culture. It's, it's like I don't think I have. Maybe tale. I did then. It's urban an urban legend. tale. Yeah, it's an urban legend about the football team. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Fee, what do you got? Playlist. Super yeah. catchy tune. I like it a lot. Okay. I, I definitely think you're right, though, Des. If, if, or in all you guys, really, if Rod Stewart did it, it would have been number one for a long, 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 long oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we'd be listening to this song on fucking 
channel 25 on Sirius XM radio yeah, five times a day, you know? Yes. So, yeah. This is um, like Mandy. Yeah. Yeah. This song's so fucking good. Really good. Um, just a disclaimer, uh, that, that urban legend was, uh, was not true. So it's yeah. A, yeah. Rod Stewart is a ladies. He's a ladies man. Hence ladies urban man. legend. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but when I was like, you know, nine, it was like, it was law proven in court. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we're at the end of this album, track 10, and they went out with style. I fucking love <laughs> this song. <laughs> this one, making love. This is a banger. This is the way you end an album. Great lyrics, great vocals, great guitar. But in the fade out, I don't know what happened, but Peter Chris like completely goes off the rails. He's doing something. I can't, I couldn't even describe it to the listeners because I don't understand it. Okay. But it's fucking bad. And it's like, I don't know, man. Again, I hate to always do this to Fee, but it's like if I gave him two drumsticks and a kit and said, Fee, do the fade out. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Dave, what do you got? All right. This is going to be a long one. Uh, okay. These guitar and uh, the these guitars and the bass sound so killer at the beginning mm. of this. Um, once the drums come in, it almost sounds a little off time, like they adjusted their tempo on the fly, um, yeah. and and just finally found where they're supposed to be. Uh, I can't bag on Peter Chris too much, even though we are. <laughs> um, but bit. he is a super nice guy. I met him a couple of years ago at the uh, Rock and Shock in in Worcester and he cool. was super super cool so so i really can't shit on him too much no um, he's cool yeah that doesn't the... matter everyone can be nice you can still shit on him <laughs> this is america baby <laughs> yeah shit away buddy yes <laughs> I yeah. love the echo on the vocal. Uh, the acoustic guitar licks in the pre-chorus are an interesting choice. I wonder why they didn't use just regular electrics. You know, maybe it was just too normal sounding. They were just spicing it up a little bit. Um, you know, the second time, Ace chimes in with some electric fills, so that was cool. But I like the way Paul sings against the echo in the chorus. Um, Definitely a Zeppelin, Robert Plant influence uh, showing here, you know, with the with the, you know, screams and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure you can you, thank me for this. Pretty sure you can hear the bass drum pedal squeaking right before the second verse. Go back and listen to it. You'll never be able to not hear it again. I'm going back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going uh, back for that. Ace's solo is on fire here. And then there's this great giant Tom fill towards the end. And the drum sound completely changed at the end. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but it's completely different sound from the rest yeah. of the song. Oh, it's Very jarring. <laughs> it's jarring. And it's performance. And it's just bad. Uh, Ed, what do you got on the final track? Uh, I had so many high hopes because I'm like, oh, there's a cool guitar opening. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. I'm like, wait a minute. This riff is Toys in the Attic mm -hmm. <laughs> from Aerosmith. And it then is. I couldn't unhear Toys in the Attic the entire time. And all I heard on that song is, this is Toys in the Attic. They stole it. So Not as good, though. Not as good. Not even close. No, not even close to as good as Toys. That's just it. I'm like, they made a shitty version of Toys in the Attic. I fucking hate this song. Yeah. Um, oh. I mean, fucking Aerosmith. Once I heard that riff, I'm like, God damn it. I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, and I didn't put it together with Toys in the Attic, but I did write This Sounds Like an Aerosmith song. But the thing is, is Kiss is so simple that it's almost hard to make the comparison because Aerosmith <laughs> is so technical. You know yeah, what I mean? No, I, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's unfortunately, there. I couldn't enjoy the song because it just, every time I got to that riff, I started going, da 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 God damn it. Yeah, it smells like Aerosmith farted. I can smell Aerosmith on this song. Uh, okay, and Fee. Final track. Fuck, 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 fuck he says. Fuck. You just ruined it for Fee. You kind of yeah. did. You Silent fucking... Breeze? <laughs> You're welcome. Fuck. So Mr. Breeze. No, no, no. This isn't pervy. Kiss gets away with being pervy. <laughs> Silent and they do, breeze? and you stop it, Ed. You <laughs> fucking stop it right now. They do. Kiss gets a pass. They do. Um, yeah, like fucking senators and fucking little girls. You know, Kiss gets a pass. But sure. uh, uh, 
and that's probably why I like this song so much. It's a playlist song for me. Uh, I I was thinking, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. This is a greasy solo. I love sure. this fucking solo. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn it! Fuck you, Ed. Don't- <laughs> yeah. yeah, this this solo is like ten W forty. Yeah, uh, you know, synthetic. It's not grease. Synthetic. Oh yeah, it's not. Okay. <laughs> WD stands for water displacement. Okay. <laughs> It literally removes moisture from things. Oh, shit. Okay. Bad comparison. Bad comparison. All right. So that's it. We have uh, we have reviewed the Kiss album. It's uh, in the books. Uh, so now it is time to release the bonus track. <laughs> this week's bonus track was requested by Darren Ring, a hard-hitting drummer. From the Boston area. He writes, Guys, I love the show. Especially Des. And I'd like (laughs) to hear you guys break down Iron Maiden's Reach Out. All right. So actually, this is a cover tune. And it was originally done by a super group called The Entire Population of Hackney. And this group was made up of members of Iron Maiden, uh, FM, and Urchin. But we have been asked to review this as an Iron Maiden song. I like my Iron Maiden. With Bruce Dickinson screaming, covered in spikes. I like my Iron Maiden hard, aggressive, and fast. With stories of bloody boots, battlefields, and screaming eagles flying over the head of the trooper. But the song we get here could easily be found on any Slaughter album. While it's technically well performed, I didn't care for it at all. Especially with the Iron Maiden tag attached to it. (laughs) So I gave this, I don't even want to give it this. Ah. All right. Because it's Iron Maiden and the rest of the band played oh, 45.5 watts. And that's being kind because I wanted to give this zero watts. I hated it. Uh, Dave, what do you got? Oh, my God. So much chorus on the guitars. Oh, terrible. Um, this isn't bad for a hard rock tune. Uh, not really Maiden. You know, reach out and let someone into your life. What Oof. what kind of self help nonsense is this? Terrible. Um, it seems kind of underwritten that they could have done a little more with the song. You know, the vocals were decent. Uh, looks like uh, the guitar player Adrian Smith sang it. Um, Bruce Dickinson on backup vocals was the best part. <laughs> yeah, but uh, totally. yeah, my my score is fifty six. Yeah. Oh, dude, you move Bruce Dickinson over onto the main mic and let him back himself up and keep sing the lead vocal. It's still a terrible Iron Maiden song, but it's way better. Yeah. Uh, Ed, what do you got? You guys are out of your goddamn minds. Okay. I love this song. I no. remember the first time I heard it. I couldn't believe it was Iron Maiden until the solo with the harmony guitars. And I went, oh, yeah, that's Iron Maiden. Um I didn't think Adrian Smith's voice was as good as it is because every time you see them live, you're like, is he really singing back up? Mm. Uh, but, oh, yeah, I love it. I, I like that it's a stray from what Maiden was. You know, this was uh, the B-side to Wasted Years off the Somewhere in Time album. Um, and Desi, if you didn't realize, they didn't even film a video for this. They just took clips from the Wasted Years uh, video and put it as the video for the song. Oh, God, I hated uh, it. It's definitely more mainstream uh, than anything. It's probably the most mainstream song Maiden has ever written. I go, but it, it, it's, I think it's a hidden gem if you're a Maiden fan and just want to hear something different. Mm. You know, I really appreciate it. And the fact that it is a full band. And they said, yeah, let's fucking see what happens. Cool. You know what? Good for them for trying to get outside their box and just seeing what, let's throw shit at the wall, see if it sticks. It did. Uh, I gave it uh, an eighty-two point six. Oh, oh. oh. no! Fee, bring this bitch down. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit, but um, yeah, I I was not expecting that vocal when that when that started at all. I was expecting to hear Bruce Dickinson, and I was like. Eh. I wasn't disappointed, but I was shocked, you know, and, oh, you and I think if I, if I listened to this song like five or six times, maybe I could have come around a little bit higher on it. But, nope. um, 
my main note was musically this is killer but why didn't he sing the whole thing you know um it kind of reminded me of one of those king's x songs where the the lead singer came in with the power vocal you know on the on the backup and i was like man i like that so much better you know but uh overall it's a good song they play it well they you know uh 65 um dave so this would be like a solid state, like uh Moffset. Uh, I mean, uh, MG Marshall head, right? Like there's no tubes. Uh, there's probably, no, probably I, I think around this time they, they were using, you know, like the rack processors uh, and you know, the, the all in one, everyone know, was, yeah, deck, was, you know, uh, just, just loaded with effects, you know, going through, you know, rack power amps and stuff. Oh, God, that was a that, time. It's yeah. one of those things I love about old maiden, you know, like can they just hear those fucking Marshall sizzling in the back? It was just mm-hmm. so good, so dirty, and just mm. <laughs> and this just was everything that that wasn't. Okay, sorry, Darren. Um Ed, please calculate those scores. All right. So after listening to all of you guys and your opinions and horrible opinions at that <laughs> because god forbid someone go stray outside what's expected yeah. uh reach out by iron maiden is pumping a mediocre 62.27 watts that's way too high um no. dave where does that Friday land that on the breaking vinyl bonus track wall of fame all right, that puts it at number four out of four. Nice, is at nice. the bottom of the list under Skid Row's Wasted Time. All right, and Darren, you have been immortalized on the Breaking Lionel Wall of Fame as picking the worst song we have reviewed today. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, that's around your mind. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, favorite song and song you'd cut for the Kiss album we just reviewed. My favorite song is Dr. Love. And the song I would cut is See You in Your Dreams. Dave, go ahead. Uh, I like Love Him and Leave Him the best just for that riff. Uh, I would cut Baby Driver. It's okay, but they could have put something cooler in its place. Hmm, I do love that riff. Do love that riff, Dave. Ed, what do you got? Uh, my favorite track was Take Me. Uh, and the track I would cut is definitely Baby Driver. Okay. And Fee, same question. See, this was so easy going in, and you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to keep it. Making Love's my favorite track on this album. Nice. I don't care. Nice. Fuck you, Ed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Ed. Fuck you, Ed. It's a popular and, uh, statement. And there were, there were a few... Uh, there were a few toss-ups on this, but we'll go with Baby Driver. It was just, that screaming was just driving me nuts. So. It, it sucked. It was terrible. Yeah. The screaming was terrible. Um, yeah. And Fee, you hated that bonus track. I know you did. It's okay. Um, <laughs> did not. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you had to replace one member of the band, who would it be and who would get the gig? Um, so I have an interesting take on this. I would cut Peter Chris, okay? But there are caveats to this. I would replace him with one Phil Rudd of ACDC. But... Bill has to wear the cat makeup, and in this universe, Peter Chris was never born. So Peter Chris doesn't exist. Okay, <laughs> so it's it's Phil Rudd of ACDC. Dave, what do you got? All right. Well, sorry, Peter Chris. Um, oh, no, it's an easy pick. Maybe John Bonham, uh, but a more interesting choice. Who also sings Roger Taylor from Queen? No. Oh. I like it, but I think both drummers might be a little too good for Kiss, which is why I picked uh, who I picked, because also a very simple rock and roll drummer, but definitely better with a better sound. Um, John Bonham would just be like, he did give him like one stick and like break his foot pedal just so he could keep up with Kiss, you know? Yeah, he'd make Gene and Paul look not good. No, I think Gene could keep up with him. I just think. No way. Oh, Fuck you. Ed, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> so got? I actually would add someone to the band because okay. I think Kiss works as Kiss for what they are. Uh, you know, as much as I shit all over a lot of this album, you know, I do. I enjoy all the Kiss hits just as much as everyone else. Uh, but I think I'd like to hear Mick Jagger 
uh, what? as a dedicated singer for Kiss and just keep Paul Stanley on guitar with Ace. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, it's odd. It's wait, wait. Odd. So you don't have you don't think there's any bluesy Stone vibe? No. You literally mentioned a Stones vibe. One song, one, one riff, <laughs> one one guitar. Mick Jagger and Kiss. Come on, stop that. That's oh, nonsense. That's you're out nonsense. of your fucking mind. That's nonsense. Ah, uh, Jesus. No. His songs are built on these giant choruses. You'd have to get somebody that actually sings what better than... just listen to a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the choruses were, were like just absolute total garbage. Shall okay. we refresh? Okay, okay. B, no. B, ah. make the magic. So... I was thinking a little bit different with this. I don't want to. I don't want to break up the band at all either. I think they're perfect the way they are, but it has to be Peter, Chris, and I was just trying to fall into the like who drums, who sings, who does that. So I came up with uh, Kelly Kiggy from Night Ranger. Oh, okay, it's fine. I think that could work. It's safe. I don't think anybody really is going to dispute that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a safe pick. That's what I felt. Yeah, so, I think yeah. it works. And in your universe, is uh, Peter Chris uh, dead or never born? What What's going on? He, he'd had to have never existed because okay. I, I, I don't want to break up the band at all. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So never existed. Okay. Um, final thoughts. I'll start. Uh, so Kiss is the all-time hottest band on the planet. And for that reason, every Kiss album before Unmasked Starts with a base score now. A base score. This is the floor. Oh, of ninety fuck. point of ninety point one watts. That's before I even listen to it. That's you just, bullshit. I, I don't care. So you just say, you know, we're doing uh we're doing Love Gun next. It starts at ninety point one. That's it. Hottest band of all times. Ever. Ever. They were a disease on the planet. Ninety point one. Um, but this was not my favorite kiss album. And it did have some lunkers on it that I didn't like. Um, so, for those reasons, this album gets the base score of 90.1. And honestly, it's probably like a 78, but it's a 90.1 because they're the hottest band in the land. Yes. <laughs> honestly, it's a 70. So, what is it? It's a 90.1. Because uh, it's, it's a classic Kiss album, and that's where it starts for me. And that's just the way it goes. You're such a tool. Yeah, I know. Uh, no. <laughs> Phillips head or uh, or flathead? Uh, neither. Okay. You're literally the what? the, the what? crank screw the crank drill. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Allen wrench. It doesn't fit in anything. Okay, uh, Dave, what do you got? I am a fan of Kiss, and I love this album. I feel like it maybe gets a little overlooked in between the gargantuan destroyer before and love gun after it, but it's a tough sounding rock from when they were still actually trying Uh, cover art. We didn't talk about that is one of the greatest album covers ever. Um, Very cool. Artist Michael Dore. I'm not sure if that's the right way to pronounce his name, but it's a very cool cover. He came back later and did the sonic boom cover but let's not hold that against him it's a gig <laughs> um so yeah don't, don't don't get me started on on new fake kiss but uh my score is 89 89 all right um ed what do you got uh so like i said i do enjoy kiss for what kiss are i think it's i think because of the people that grew up with kiss it reminds them of their childhood i feel people have too many blinders on about them i think they are way overrated as musicians i think they've written a whole bunch of catchy tunes they're kind of like the cars for me they're not great musicians but they wrote a shitload of great songs the problem is if the song wasn't great it was utter fucking garbage in my opinion um this album particularly I agree with Dave. The artwork is fantastic. I really love the artwork. Uh, but music-wise, this album, I gave it a 48.1. Oh, fuck. Just <laughs> below average. Oh. Wow. Wow. And I just raised my score 10 points. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thank no, you. Um... Me, actually, Fee, Fee, I must say, this is a rule on the show. There's no sandbagging, and there's nope. no piling on to make up for somebody else's 
fucking utter lack of musical taste. Okay. <laughs> um, so I do want to say this. Okay. Kiss was bigger than the Beatles. Kiss was the biggest band to ever exist. You're they- out of your fucking goddamn mind. How dare you put them in the same sentence? Dude, fuck you. Kiss was bigger than the Beatles. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. No, kiss kiss captured. I quit. I quit. No, no. I didn't say they were better than the Beatles, okay? They are not better than the Beatles. They were bigger than the Beatles. They were not bigger than the Beatles. They were the big hottest band in the land. All right. Fee, what do you got? Okay. You can go a little high. Go ahead. I, I'll turn no, my head. No, I, I'm I'm not I'm not <laughs> adding ten points to my score because then okay. that would put it way too high. But okay. um I <sighs> Gosh, because I'm with you, Des. I want to rate every Kiss album as like 90 or higher. But has a floor. I listened critically, and there were some stinkers in mid album, and I ended up giving it an 85. 85. That's you know what? Okay, so I originally had it at a 79.9, right? Yeah. And then I said, you can't do that. It's fucking Kiss. No, you can do that. You can you be do honest, that. Des. This it's is Kiss. okay. I can't turn my back on Kiss. I dressed up like Gene Simmons. I drew his pick. No, no. And how did that affect anything that they did? <laughs> Nothing. It didn't affect it at all. Listen, it would hurt me to go below a 90.1. It would hurt me. Even though it's I know okay it's okay to be hurt, Des. You can be vulnerable. I know the score is wrong. The score you can is be wrong. vulnerable. You can be vulnerable. No, for the Kiss Army, for the Kiss Army, I'm fuck leaving it at a 90. Army. Oh, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Uh, Ed, will you please calculate those scores and tell us how many watts this album is pushing? Uh, With your 45, don't worry. It's going to be right where it should be. Uh, it's close. It's close. All right, so totaling all the scores, averaging them out, I find this score is a little high. Not too high, but it's a little high. Uh, in this album, Kiss Rock and Roll Over is pushing a total watt of 78.05. That's exactly where it belongs. Ed, what is going on now? So this is a phenomenon that I've noticed on the pod since the moment this album was, um, was mentioned. Yes. Nobody has been able to say rock and roll all over. Rock, rock and roll, and roll all Rock and roll all over. Okay. So that's it. And Dave, will you please because tell us? Because the album says rock and roll over. There is no all on the sleeve that I'm holding up to the actual video screen. And that's why. Because we're all pronouncing it correctly. Okay. And you're the shitbag who is not Mr. Fuck you. I'm a Kiss fan. I dressed up as Gene Simmons. The minimum score should be 90, but I can't even remember the name of the album that we're literally discussing for the past hour. Okay, so the name of the album should have been, and had I been there in the boardroom, it should have been (laughs) Rock and Roll All Over. Okay. Uh, And I cannot argue with anything you just said because you're right. You're right. I am a fucking pinhead. Okay. I love you, though. I love you with all of my heart. And I never noticed that. I I actually I never knew that anybody could be my polar opposite as much as you. So it's it's a pleasure. pleasure. I think that's why we get along so well. It's the best. We don't get along very well. It's the best. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Um, So, Dave, please tell us where that lands. Kiss rock and roll over on the chart. All right, it comes in at number nine, just under Molly Cruz' Shout at the Devil and over Tina Turner's Private Dancer. Okay, I like that. I actually think that I would probably listen to Shout at the Devil before I would listen to this. It's a more complete album. Awesome. All right, we did it. We fucking, we got through another one, and I think it was a great episode, guys. Uh, So I tell you, and I want to tell the fans, so we have no idea what the next pick is going to be, just like you. And I look forward to it. I have, I have butterflies right now. Fee, you have the next pick. Please tell us and the listeners what album we will be listening to this week. I have no idea how all you assholes are going to respond to this because I thought 
my last pick was going to be received very well, and it was shit on for a week. Oh, God. Um, I already every, hate it. every day for a week, it was shit oh, on. Oh, my God. So. I know exactly where you're going to go with this. I already hate yeah. this. Oh, no. Um, oh. You, might, you might love this. I am picking a band, uh, an album by this band that I'm going to see next Wednesday night out here oh, in yeah. Las Vegas. I knew it. I knew, knew it. it. And uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, the band name is Tesla. The album oh, is nope. The Great Radio Controversy. Nice. Nice. All right. Come on. No one can hate Tesla. No one. No. Can. They're, they're the poor man's Guns N' Roses. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take it. It's it's right. great. Good. Nice pick, V. Anyway, yeah. round of applause. Yeah. I thought you were going to pick U2. Oh, that, if, if I had next week's pick, it would have been U2. But yeah, no. Today it's uh, Tesla. Yep. And boys and girls, I've already picked my album for next week, and you are all in for a fucking treat. Maybe a hundred watts. Keep that on your hat. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, guys, without you guys, this show would suck ass. Each one of you bring your personality to the show. You prop it up like tent posts, despite what I bring to it. Despite what I bring to the show, you guys are great. Um, the listeners, I see you guys growing every week. The numbers are growing. You guys are fucking awesome. Uh, you like the Kiss Army. So keep coming. Uh, this week, we are doing Fletch on Hey, Did You Ever See That Movie? So go check that out. And until next great week. Movie. Yeah, great movie. I'm going to mm-hmm. give that one a uh, big score. Uh, steak sandwich and a steak sandwich. So until next week. Take those records out of the sleeve and let the music breathe. See you later. See ya. Adios. Later. Later. (laughs) All right.